Okay, let's figure out what else we need to do to get our matrix 3D working in our game. I'm going to build again. Actually, I'm going to turn on configuration here. Configura configuration manager. Let's start building the sandbox game again. See what errors the compiler flags at us. Uh, it's complaining about vector 2D because we no longer have vector 2D. We have vector 3D, and we said vector 3D up here. So I'm actually going to control H and replace vector 2D with vector 3D. And match case, match whole word, replace all. That's five of them, so that should take care of that error, but that's not going to take care of all of them. We're going to have to define rotate for a matrix uh, matrix 3D. In fact, we said matrix 3D up here, but we're not using matrix 3D. We're using matrix 2D. So let's go back and say matrix 3D. Oops, 3D. Control A, Control C. Control V, replace all. There's two occurrences. I guess these were the only two. Oh, what did I just do? Replace matrix 2D with matrix 3D. I said replace all. Eh, whatever. Okay, build. Uh, rotate again is not part of matrix 3D. Uh, binary operator, we haven't defined or implemented the multiplication operator for a. What is this there? This is a vector 3D and a, what's this float? Yeah, that's a float. Okay, so we're going to have to do that. Uh, what else are we going to have to do? Let's pin this. Uh, in fact, I'm actually going to list all these things just so we don't have to keep popping back and forth here. Let me get Notepad open. Nice little place to keep notes. I know a lot of my friends like Notepad++, but I'm kind of hardcore here, Notepad. So we need to do rotate with matrix 3D. We need to do multiplication for float and vector, vector 3D, I guess casing doesn't really matter in here. Uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, matrix times a vector 3D, so we need to do matrix 3D times vector 3D. Uh, again, there's rotate, and I think that's all we need to do. So we need to write tests for these and implement them. We're going to do them one by one. We'll do, uh, we'll write a test, implement one, write a test, implement another, write a test, implement another, so on and so forth. I think the easiest one of, out of all these is the float times the vector 3D. That should be pretty straightforward. So let's go build configuration manager, turn this off so that we can get a successful build with the other two projects. Unpin that. Uh, go here to engine, and let's go to engine test. Math tests. We have vector 3D tests. So we did construction. Let's do. Let's do test vector 3D uh, scalar multiplication, and I should be consistent with the naming that we're using here in vector 2D. So we have constructor, but here I called it construction. So I'm actually going to go as far as saying constructor here. And then I'm not sure why we're getting all these red squigglies. I'll look at that later. Uh, vector addition, scalar multiplication, then we call it the same thing here. Comma, of course. There we go. Okay. The reason I'm pausing here is I'm thinking, should I be proactive and throw in vector addition? But again, this is an educational project. We're going to add as needed, just in time coding, so to say. Uh, so I'm not going to proactively add that. We'll add it, we'll add it later uh, when we need it. Vector 3D scalar multiplication. Okay. Vector 3D instance. Let's start with simple numbers. One, two, three. Like so. Vector 3D multiplied. Uh, let's just get, say that's going to get uh, a scalar. Let's pick a simple scalar times the instance. And I'm going to say this is multiplied 1, control L, control VV, multiplied 2. Let's do instance times our scalar. Like so, see how I'm testing the reflexitivity of this operation. And then this should be pretty simple. Expect float equal uh, multiplied 
one dot x will equal some value. We're going to do that with the y and this with the z. And then I'm going to grab all this, control C, control V, control V, and multiplied two uh, should equal the same things. But instead, what I'm going to say is uh, let's do an alt drag here. Alt drag space multiplied one dot and escape out of that x y z and delete these so if a equals b if a equals b and b equals c that should mean that a is equal to c and so that's the kind of test i'm going on here is i'm testing multiplied one and multiplied two and multiplied two should have the same values as multiplied one so that's my thought process there five times one will be five five times two will be ten five times three will be fifteen so all that's left to do is to declare these operators and make sure our tests fail and then implement them so let's do that let's go to math now which file would be i didn't really talk about this too much when we did the two dimensional ones Oh, never mind. I don't need to talk about that. We'll talk about that with the matrix. Sorry. Uh, vector 2D. Or not, well, not 2D. We're doing 3D now. Vector 3D H. And I want to say inline vector 3D operator multiplication const vector 3D reference left float. Oh, let's just do this. Vect what did I call it with the vector 2D? I want to be consistent with my naming. Uh, multiply. I did call it vector. Okay. So vector float scalar semicolon control L control VV swap the arguments around here. Drag it over there. Comma space go over here. Remove the superfluous comma. Highlight all this. Control KF. I was hoping that would indent it to format it. Looks like I'm going to have to do that by hand. And then we need the inline file to actually add the implementation. So pound include. Oh, do you see that? That's a Visual Studio bug. That's a IntelliSense bug. I think it has. I don't know. That's weird. I type pound and then it moves my cursor over there. I actually have to restart Visual Studio to fix that. Maybe I'll do that between this video and the next. Pound include vector 3D dot. INL, and I should probably put quotes around this. But if I'm going to pound include vector 3D.INL, I better add one. So header file vector 3D.INL. And then in here, I'm going to put the implementation for these two operators. So right there, control KF. Uh, we don't need to say inline again. That's not necessary because we declared them as inline. Uh, curly, curly, enter. End key, curly, enter, and I think we're good. I'm not sure. Vector 3D is undefined. Well, maybe that's IntelliSense lying to us. Okay, I'm just going to return a Vector 3D instance here and here. Because we're using test driven development, I want to write the test first. Uh, notice IntelliSense having personal issues, but the compile is just fine now. So we have engine tester set up as our test project. Run that. We get some red saying, hey, uh, scalar multiplication didn't quite work out. So I'm feeling the warm and fuzzy that, that yeah, it's not working. Of course it didn't work. We didn't implement it. So let's do that. Uh, again, I'm going to rely on the return value optimization trick. That video is back. Let me look here. Video 47, if you need to refer back to what that means. Vector dot x times scalar vector dot y times scalar vector dot z times scalar and then down here I could write the same thing again but I'm actually going to uh, I know that a, a vector a vector times a scalar is equal to that scalar times a vector and I actually generally put right my scalars on the left hand side so I'm going to take this code cut it paste it down here and this is honestly just a readability picky thing of Jamie's I'm gonna 
I'm going to swap the order of the arguments here just because I generally do the scalar on the left. Generally, I don't do it on the right, even though we will sometimes. So I'm, I, I know it's kind of picky, but I'm going to grab this, control X, go over here, paste it. Oops. Uh, alt, well, maybe not alt. Yeah, I want to do an alt drag. Let's do an alt drag there, space, multiply space, alt drag here, delete. And then in this operator, I'm just going to say, hey, return scalar times a vector. And I'm actually going to list this operator second because uh, I don't have to, but I generally use the first operator first, so I kind of visually expect to see that first. And I'm going to go as far as swapping these declarations as well around to be consistent with what I have over here. Necessary? Probably not. Actually, it's not. Uh, professional? Yes. I'm being picky. Control shift B, build started, build succeeded, we're still good. Control F5, I'm getting all greens. I'm going to commit. And in the next video, we're going to take on one of these next tasks. I think probably the simplest one would be a matrix times a vector, and then we can hit the rotation stuff.